Also, one of the biggest questions I get when it comes to working with MIDI in any DAW, especially Studio One, is how can I mix my MIDI drums as though they were regular drum track recordings? And there's a couple of things to be aware of. You know, the MIDI drums and V-drum kits triggering MIDI drums, whether you're creating with a keyboard or something like the Atom or a V-drum kit, uh, they're all going to have different nuances and things like that. So this particular drum track that I have here, this is made up of some of the uh, samples and stuff that I sampled over the years. And I created a nice kit so that I can actually play my drums inside of Studio One without having to actually mic up the drum kit more than once. <clears throat> okay, so these have all sorts of dynamics and things that are captured, like the snare. You can see there's multiple samples and stuff, and this will be in another video for impact. But the issue is, okay, they sound great and all, but I want to mix them like real drums. I don't want to do the MIDI, and of course, even if you explode the MIDI, you still only have one channel. I could also d divide the different pads and put in their own channels, but it's still not the same as mixing audio. So the question is, how can I convert these to audio and mix them like real drums? All right, so here's your answer. And there's a couple of ways to do this and a couple of things to watch for. I'm going to go through all of that. So here's my drum track. And there's some toms at the end. Oh, there's no toms. Okay, so this will be really simple. So if I right click and I choose explode pitches to tracks, now you can see this is under under recent items. So if you don't see explode pitches to tracks under your recent items, then you would actually find it here under instrument parts and let's see, do, 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 there we go, explode pitches. So once you actually choose this here, it'll put it in your recent items. So there we go. I'm going to say explode pitches to tracks. Boom, there we go. So now all of my separate drum sounds are on their own individual MIDI tracks. But again, you run into the problem that there's only a single fader. Now I could do it the hard way and I could assign each of these different pads to its own output. And that will be in another impact video. But if you really quickly want to do it and you're using something like Easy Drummer or a Superior Drummer or even uh, SSD um, or whatever or MT Power Drums, there's a really cool way to do this so you can mix it like really uh, like real drums. So what we're going to do here is we have our separate tracks. So the first thing you want to do is do the explode pitches. Let's do that again. Right click on the event, say explode pitches. Here we go. We have the pitches. So now there's a couple of ways to do this. I could just highlight all of these and I could do a control B or it would actually be bounce selection and it goes through and it does it. So now what it's done is it has created audio versions of the drums and kept the MIDI versions but muted them. That's one way to do it. So now the next way, we could actually highlight all of the tracks like this. We can right click and we can choose transform to audio. And you have some selections here so you can choose to render any inserts that you might have for effects or compression on your drum kit. Usually I don't do that and you want to preserve the instrument track. This option gives you the ability to go from the audio rendering back to the MIDI, make a correction and then back again. And you can choose to remove the instrument or keep it active, uh, but it'll use CPU if you keep it active. So a lot of times this is done to save CPU as well. So let's just go ahead. We're going to click OK. Uh, the auto tail uh, is at the end for things like ringing uh, symbols and things like that. I usually keep it at five seconds. So now we're going to click OK. Just like that, and there we go. We have audio versions of all our drums, and we also have channels for each of the drums. And on top of that, we have the embedded MIDI data on each of the tracks in case we want to go back and edit the MIDI. So one of the easy things to do is to just right-click on all those same tracks and just say transformed instrument tracks. 
and it goes back to the original MIDI set. Now, it's important to know that the transform option is taken out of the normal undo process. So even if you do a whole bunch of edits afterwards, you can still go back to the MIDI drums, make your edits, and then go back to the rendered drums. We'll do it again. Right click, transform to audio, and boom. Okay, so that is really simple to do. The other way to do that, let's go back to the MIDI. There we go. So you've done the explode pitches. You can also just be really simple about it. You can highlight all of your MIDI tracks and you can do a bounce or a control B. Now, what this does is it creates audio versions of your drums, but it keeps the MIDI separate and automatically mutes them so that you can go ahead and go to the track list and just hide them all. And But you have them, and now you're mixing all of the audio versions. And the next question that may come up is, how do I make the mono? Really simple. Highlight all of these. I'm sorry, highlight, not those. Highlight all of your tracks and change the channel condition to mono. Oh, you can go to all of your audio tracks and do another bounce. And now they're all mono. Now you can mix them like true mic drums. Now be careful because using the bounce method, you will not be able to go back to the way, uh, to the original MIDI track because this part is put in the normal undo. So the cool part is you can always go to the track list you can delete all of these audio tracks and bring back the original MIDI and unmute the tracks and do more editing. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get back to this. So those are the two ways to create audio out of your drums. So here is the one thing that you do have to watch for. Let's go ahead and use the transform option. Listen closely to the hi-hat. Okay, you can see that it cuts off normally, just the way that you would expect. But watch this. <laughs> if you, and this happens with the bounce as well, if you do the transform to audio track, do it the way that I showed you, and you got the audio versions, but there's one little anomaly that we have to watch for. And here you go. The open hi-hat is no longer being canceled, and it sounds really weird. Yeah, it sounds really weird there. So what is the fix for that? Let me show you. It's really, really simple. I'm going to use undo, and I'm going to go back. Okay, here are the two hi-hat tracks. Now, I don't have them labeled here. It's just because of the particular kit that I used. It was a custom kit that I made. But any of the uh, Personas kits and any of the newer kits and stuff, once you actually have labels on the pads and you do the explode pitches, all of the names will be there. So this is just... Uh, a case in this drum kit alone. So how do we get back the canceling of the hi-hat? Okay, now I don't know why you have to do this, but you do. So here is the closed hi-hat. Here is the open hi-hat. We're just going to simply drag the open hi-hat on top of the closed hi-hat, and I'm going to hit the control lock key. There you go. And what that does is it merges those two together. Now, when I actually go ahead and do the transform, they cancel normally. I know it's a little strange, but it does it does work and it works well. So let's right click and let's do transform back to an instrument track. And those should be together anyway. Why they're rendered on two separate tracks? It's just because they're on separate pads. But uh, so remember, if you are having issues with the canceling hi hat, take the open, drag it on top of the closed or foot pedal, depending on which trigger you're using and simply highlight the event and click cap lock. And it merges them together, therefore making the transform to audio or bounce function correctly by rendering the hi-hat and open hi-hat correctly. Be 
Beautiful. So those are some fantastic ways to actually mix your drums, your MIDI drums. Like from Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Impact, or SSD, it really gives you the ability to mix them as you want. And of course, even with the transform, if you want them all to be mono, it's really simple. You go ahead and you highlight all of the events. Change the channel condition right here to mono. And then right click, bounce, or control B, and you have mono tracks. Whoops, hold on a second. It, it didn't work. It didn't work because I didn't do them all. Dum, dum, dum. There we go. Now we're going to highlight and do control. There we go. Now everything's mono. So there you go. You have a whole bunch of different ways to take your MIDI drums and make them audio drums. Just remember the little hi-hat trick that occurs sometimes. Some kids do it. Some kids don't. But I rarely have an issue once I get the open and closed or foot pedal open or whatever you have triggering the hi-hat. Once you get those combined on a single track. It actually helps a lot. So I hope you guys got something from that, and I will see you all in the next video.